the uh, Proverbs 30 and 12. So start with that. Just start with that. So, okay. All right, listen up. We are Hebrew Israelites. We come out here every Saturday and Sunday to prophesy the downfall of America and to bring these people on the sign back to the true nationality. All right? You Negroes, Latinos, Native American Indians, you're the true people, chosen people of the Most High, of the, about the Bible speaks about, all right? And it's our job to tell you about the coming destruction to, to this place called America, all right? And that two-thirds of you people, you're going to die along with it because y'all walk hand in hand with the wicked and y'all want this place to prosper, all right? So it's our job to come out here and let you know your fate and the fate of this, this land, all right? This is Proverbs 30 and 12. There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes, and yet is not washed from their filthiness. Right, because you know, there's a question that I was gonna ask you people like, who, who in the world or in the heavens or in the sea beneath, who told you that you were good people? You know, because y'all people walk with this attitude like you're something, all right? Like the Most High is gonna uh, redeem you in that day, or the Most High is gonna reward you for all the good that you've done in that day, all right? No, nowhere in the Bible did the Most High ever call you a good people. The scripture said in Romans that there is not one good person upon the earth that does not sin. And even when the Lord, the Prince of Glory, Yahweh came on the earth, not once did he ever call himself a good person. Not once. But for some reason, you are Negro Latinos, y'all feel like y'all are exempt and y'all are a special people. But the Most High is telling y'all you're not, all right? Yeah, and then yeah, can, can go to the next scripture. Uh, Proverbs 30 and 12. There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes and yet is not washed from their filthiness. Right, and real quick, that generation is, that's this generation, y'all two thirds. Just to add on to that, y'all are those uh, pure in your own eyes, uh, pure in your own eye people, thinking that y'all are good people. When y'all done nothing to prove your work. There is a generation, oh how lofty are their eyes and their eyelids are lifted up. Right, being proud, you know? Again, like I just said, y'all people have done nothing to show the Most High that y'all are even worthy of the kingdom. The Most High gave a specific guideline on how to uh, hopefully please them, to hopefully get that salvation. But none of y'all people seem to care about it whenever it's told to, whenever it's told to y'all. That's why it's good to say that, oh, lofty are their eyes, or how, how lofty are their looks in their eyes. Because y'all haven't done nothing, but yet y'all, y'all do about y'all do everything y'all want, y'all do everything y'all think y'all can do, and then y'all walk away like y'all didn't do anything wicked. All right. Uh, give me uh, uh, Ecclesiastes eight and eleven. This is Ecclesiastes eight and eleven. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Right, and like we always come out here, like the, be like the beginning of our uh, introduction, we always tell you the fate of, of you two-thirds and the fate of this land that y'all love, all right? We're telling you every single Saturday and Sunday until the prophecies fulfill itself, but y'all people get that attitude every Saturday and Sunday after we're done that it's not going to happen. That's why the scripture said that because sentence against the evil work is not speedily executed, y'all continue to think that y'all are uh, pure. Y'all continue to think that y'all can do whatever y'all want and get away with it, and then y'all still going to get a reward at the end. And that's why uh, if you go in the book of Job, it talks to you. Job described the evil that y'all do uh, as a heinous crime. Probably uh, described as uh, one of the most wicked things you can do, slipping from the most high's order. And that's the point I'm trying to get across is that because the most eyes have done nothing yet, that evil has risen up in your people. All right? To, that, that's a great evil that's uh, going in your minds, thinking that y'all are pure when y'all aren't. All right? Wait a minute, got it. Let me get this. This is Proverbs, uh, Proverbs chapter 20, verse 9. Who can say, I have made my heart clean, I am pure from my sin? Right? Because, and that's the truth, man. No man is able to cleanse his own self by off of doing nothing. 
You Yo. can't even cleanse yourself off works. Okay? For all you people that think that, well, I follow the commandments. That's not going to save you, though. The Bible tells you clearly how, to, how you're going to be cleansed from all filthiness. And even at that, all our righteousness still has filthy rags in the most high's eyes. Uh, Proverbs 20 and 9. Who can say, I have made my heart clean. I am pure from my sin. Question mark. Yeah, right. Because, and like the brother said, because like a question mark, who, how, who, what man could do that? You know? And the brother just told you, so the scripture is that the only way you can be cleansed is through this word. Because this world, this wicked world is what's our, our battle. This is what this is what makes you evil. Breed a friend to the world, following its ways. That's why it's good. And like the brother just I like how he said it, question mark. Because again, you people haven't done nothing. You two-thirds think you're gonna get uh uh what it talks about in Second Ezra, that uh, that that it, uh, incorruptible kingdom, that everlasting kingdom, but y'all haven't done nothing for it. And at that, y'all go on wickedly. You two thirds of the most wicked people there are, man, along with the so-called white man. Y'all cause if, if y'all if there's a wicked act going on, y'all the first y'all the first to take place there. And the Most High didn't tell y'all to do that. The Most High never told y'all to go along with the heathen or with these other nations and to do what they do or to act how they act. That's how the heathen acts. Like, that, like they're pure in their own eyes. And the most of it tells you the, uh, the fate of, the, of their doings, the reward of their doings, which is what you're going to get because y'all want to act the same way. Again, like uh, going back to last week, I wanted to say earlier, uh, a minute ago, how we were talking about how wicked this place is. That's what, that's, that's scripture, those scriptures may prove exactly how wicked y'all are. Like it says in uh, Proverbs where you, uh, you uh, like a whore does, she wipes her mouth after eating a dinner and acts like she hasn't done nothing. That's how y'all people are. Committing all these atrocities. Spiritual adulteries. Uh, continue, Proverbs 20 and nine again. Who can say I have made my heart clean? I am pure from my sin. Di diverse weights and diverse measures. Both of them are alike abomination to the Lord. Even a child is known by his doings, whether his work be pure and whether it be right. Right, and again, like you said, uh, an unjust weight is an abomination. That's an unjust weight. So you, for you to think, uh, for you to do all these things, do all these, the, uh, uh, you commit all these actions that are contrary to the Bible. That's, and, and you say yourself is good. That's an unbalanced weight. Because where are your good works? Where do you find the commandments? Where is your faith? Where is your studies? Where is your proof? Where is your, uh, like the seven Timothys? Study to show that self approved unto the most high. Continue on what you're saying. Okay, yeah, yeah, I mean, well, yeah. You get like the brother's saying, where are your works? Because a man, because, again, you're a wicked people. Y'all do all the... Real quick, I'm just backing you up. Continue come, come. with what you're talking about. Okay, all right. Yeah, I'll just get to read this for you real quick. Uh, That's fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but uh, if you want to bring it out, yeah. go ahead. All right. Oh, I'll bring it out real quick because uh, it's Luke 6 and 46. And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? And uh, I wanted to bring that out real quick because, like, y'all, people are expecting some type of reward, all right, for everything, even when you're in the world. When, the, when you know, how Shai said, and the Most High said that, in the world you shall, you shall see tribulation. And none of y'all people are going through some type of affliction to even prove that you're worthy of receiving what the Most High is going to give you. Real quick, you're not going, uh, you're not receiving any form of affliction uh, of re uh, regarding his name. Because it tells you that in the scriptures that he that is persecuted for my name's sake. Not because, regardless whether you're in this truth or not, you're still in the world and you're still going to catch hell. But what are you catching hell for? That's, that's the difference. That's the separation. Okay? Because not only is uh, this, this truth, these words are going to cleanse you, but also suffering for the Lord's sake is going to cleanse you. The suffering is what's going to make a man perfect. And, all, and at the end of the day, all you got is hope. But like the scriptures always say, man, your hope is in vain. Because you're the ones, go, again, going back to Proverbs, they, or you're doing nothing, for, you're not proving your work. You're not having hope. 
You're not being afflicted for this, for the, for the truth, for the actual truth. You know, you're not going through no no type of trial to see if you're worthy of the kingdom. But yet again, y'all people are, y'all people see ourselves as a special people. And I was gonna say this too, like, like Proverbs says, uh, y'all are pure in your own eyes, right? And we already know what righteous, brothers, we know what righteousness is. But what kind of righteous person, a, a righteous person, is gonna go about their lives boasting and bragging and, and puffing up to people, uh, saying what they are or boasting what they are? What righteous thing does that? The Most High, man, again, not Isaiah, Jeremiah, Hosea. You know, Micah, they didn't ever go around the world saying, I'm Micah, I'm Isaiah, get out of the way. But y'all people, man, y'all are the wicked. Y'all go about boasting yourself like you're something, again. Now, y'all ain't nothing, man, but yet, y'all feel like y'all are gonna make it that day by that rapture or whatever, you know? Just again, man, just proving to y'all people, man, that y'all are that evil generation, that evil gener that great evil generation, and you're gonna be destroyed for it, all right? This is Ephesians chapter 5, verse 5. For this you know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who was an idolater, had any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Right. And that's 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 a point. That's a fact. And I remember like last week I said, uh, or, yeah, I said the last week that uh, it's so wicked in this place that a person can actually think they're righteous when really they're the most, they're a really wicked person. That's how wicked it's gotten. When what was it, Isaiah 8 and 20 says that he that speaketh not according to the law and the testimony, there is no light in him. And that's that great evil too. There you go. Again, proven because again, y'all don't, y'all don't, don't, I remember like real quick, when me and his brother, when we were coming to the truth, I remember, I remember personally, from my experience, whenever I started getting into the truth more, uh, naturally I started talking to this brother. Every time we met up, it was, uh, did you read that scripture last night? Or was it about, did you read that book? Or how was that book? It was, but it was referred to the Bible. But it was natural. We didn't see anything wrong with it, but we found out later in the truth too that, like the scripture say in 1 Corinthians, let your communication be uh, godly. Well, y'all people ain't doing that. Y'all people sit. Y'all people sit, gather together, and imagine mischief against each other, and whoever you want to. You know. Again, another that's another great evil. Uh, this is Second Edges 15 and 24. It says, "Woe to them that sin and keep not my commandments," saith the Lord. I will not spare them. Go your way, you children, from the power to fall not my sanctuary. Right, because. Again, y'all the ones, like I said, uh, woe to them that sin and keep not my commandments. Y'all are not, y'all not keeping his commandments. That's why, that's why the most, that's why uh, the most high man, that's why he's got two thirds. Because those are the ones we already know that they're defiling the sanctuary. They're not going to be able to come into the sanctuary. All right, that's why he calls you a two third. But that's why he said also too, I'm not going to spare you in that day, because um, that, what was that scripture you put out a minute ago in? Uh, Proverbs, the unjust, the unjust, unjust yeah, the unjust weights. Again, y'all being extremely wicked and thinking you're gonna receive it. Well, that's an unjust weight. You don't get good for doing wrong. That's why the Most High said He's not gonna spare you in that day. Uh, this is Psalms five and four. For thou art not, for thou art not a God that hath pleasure in wickedness. Neither shall evil dwell with thee. Right. And, and all right, and. Uh, the most, like I said, the Most High has no, he has no, he has no dealings with no unclean person, right, right. a sinner, a wicked man. To do You're not going to be in, the, in, in sitting next to him. You're not going to be delivered. That's what it means. If you're on, if you're defiled, you, you're done. And two thirds of you nigger Latinas are defiled. There's no correcting you, no making you better. You're, you're done. You're sick. Your perpetual sickness has corrupted you, has de destroyed you, man. Your sin. Well, I'm going to continue on 2nd Edges 15 and 26. For the Lord knoweth all them that sin against him, and therefore delivereth them unto death and destruction. Right. And again, too, uh, real quick, the scriptures we're reading, man, the most high, there's another scripture, I believe it's in Ecclesiasticus, that says, uh, for them, for, uh, or it says, uh, sin lies at the door for them that work iniquity. You know, 
like the brother just read it, the most high he knows your heart. He already knows a two-thirds heart. He, already, he, made that, he made that person. And he, and he knows what you're gonna do because that's why you're gonna, that's why like the brother said, you're, in a, you're done. You're in a perpetual stink that it's not gonna be cut, it's not gonna be healed. Y'all two-thirds, y'all done too much, too much wickedness. Like the most high said that wickedness, y'all done too, or y'all overpassed the deeds of the wicked. And the more, like I said, the Psalms, the most high, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't want no dealings, dealings with you. And uh, I was actually gonna read a scripture later, but uh, the most high, he even told you, man, he hates y'all people. Like, and we already read it, man, the most high, he hates. In the Bible, there is hate. And he hates you two thirds of you other nations, you so-called white man. Because y'all do all the same thing, y'all go into the same spirit. Y'all come after America. Y'all trust in your own selves, y'all trust in your own bellies. The most High has no need of that. That's why y'all gonna be destroyed. And again, and again, you unfilthy, y'all filthy, pure in your own eyes people, y'all are the ones that all these scriptures are going at, man. Y'all are the sinners. Y'all the ones who, y'all abuse the grace that we're under. You know, y'all are whoremongers, idolaters, adulterers, backbiters, liars. Uh, this is Malachi 2 and 16. For the Lord, the God of Israel, saith, saith that he hated putting away. For one covereth violence with his garment, saith the Lord of hosts. Therefore take heed to your spirit, that ye deal not treacherously. You have wearied the Lord with your words, yet you say, wherein have we wearied him? When you say, everyone that doeth evil is good in the sight of the Lord, and he delighteth in them. For where is the God of judgment? Right, see, and that's funny because like, we just read a scripture in Ecclesiastes 8 and 11, have been such scripture because you haven't seen, you haven't really seen the power of the Lord really come back yet. It's coming though. Y'all, y'all, wait, y'all, y'all, we're just awaiting that rude awakening for y'all. But that's, but that's funny because that's the attitude you get when y'all don't see uh, chastisement, judgment. For, and, and you know what? It's, it's beautiful how the Most High did it because with the men of the Lord, what do we get every, we, we get chastisement every day for the second we wake up. Just having to wake up to this wicked ass place that's chastisement. You know, but it keeps our eyes open and aware and circumspect. But to the ones who is not given to, what happens? They actually think that their wickedness is making them a good person. Y'all are blinded. Y'all are blinded. Y'all's, y'all's, uh, y'all's cares of, the cares of the world or y'all's life. Oh, yes. Well, yeah, the cares of this world. That blinds them. Oh, that's part of the world. That's what happened, and, and that's why, again, I'm going back to the, the uh, scripture in Job, when Job said that it was a heinous crime. Because when you look at that word, man, it's, it, uh, it, goes, it, it goes back to, uh, it's, uh, what is that? It's synonymous to the word hate, but it also says like a treacherous dealing, a treacherous dealing, which brothers read, don't be doing no treacherous dealings. And that's, that's your greatest crime, man to have departed from the Lord and think that you're pure in your own eyes. Uh, this is Jeremiah 8 and 22. Is there, no, is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the, heal, the health of the daughter of my people recovered? Right, because now you know he's asking the question again. Why, why is it not healed? I mean, well, because there's an example. Us brothers, they're all throughout the uh, four corners of the earth. We're out there giving you that that ointment but nobody's nobody's wanting it because again y'all think y'all think y'all already healed like it said in um john uh uh y'all believe y'all y'all believe y'all see y'all believe y'all y'all believe y'all spiritually awake i remember we gave that example to the that there's this negro that told me that he he believes he's spiritually awake because he's smoking weed but y'all are blinded by the own care of this world the only things y'all love this world but y'all think y'all are doing good you know? Uh, this is Isaiah uh, chapter 1, verse 4. Ah, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. Why should you be stricken anymore? You will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. From the sole of the 